everybody to M Class Email, the show where we sit down with your emails, answer them, or pretend to answer them for probably about an hour and a half. I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm Josh. <laughs> and joining us today, yet again, is Mr. Kevin Cole. Hello. Oh, he's Hi, back. Kevin Cole. It's like almost like you didn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost like we record these back to back or something. Weird. That's how the sausage is made. No, we're recording on two separate days. It's fine. This is a week later. What? What is it? (laughs) Okay. What did he say? (laughs) So our first email of the evening is from Sam Lindstrom. Oh, shit. And he sent us a great piece of fan art that whenever this episode goes out to patrons, which you can become at patreon.com slash mclasspodcast... For as little as a dollar. Whenever this episode comes out for you patrons, I will post it on Twitter, and I'll post it again whenever it comes out for non-patrons. Yeah, I wanted to put it up right now, but I I thought better of it. Yeah, people are going to be like, what? It's great. It's it's really great. It's so good. Thank you, Sam. I fucking love it. Yeah, it's cool. Jeff and I have a podcast called OGOC together, and Sam sends us his characters all the time. And I just love Sam's art. Just, yeah, Sam it's is really an good. Amazingly fun artist. I love everything he does. He's yeah. got this like way with like showing characterization through the whole body that I love. Yeah, it's like it's moving. I was just gonna say it's like his stuff is moving. Yeah, uh, his uh his thesis cartoon is really really good too. Oh uh, yeah, it is. Vitizen did the music for that. It's great. It's great. That Vitizen boy Whoa. is everywhere these days. He's so, that Vitizen's so hot right now. He is hot right now. Hmm. Uh, Sam Lindstrom titled his email Legacy of Gorn. <laughs> oh, okay. He begins, Oh, Trek Boys? Hey. Hi. Uh, it's been a hot <laughs> minute slash six months since I last sent you an email. Whoa, oh, it wait. feels like yesterday. Oh, wait, never mind. Reset the timer, boys. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if he ended the email right there? <laughs> <laughs> What are your thoughts on the nature of stories changing over time through adaptations, remakes, and sequels? I don't think it's worth arguing if adaptation can be as valuable as the original work. After all, Rich Masters wrote his own phenomenal season of TNG on this very podcast, and there's undeniable value in that. Not to mention how much Star Trek has changed over time while visually maintaining some kernel of the series' core appeal. But it's hard not to feel weird about the way stories are retold and reimagined so many times by whoever owns the rights. It's just a given now that any semi-beloved property will be dug up again and again, whether we want it or not. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I fucking hate it. I think it's ruining society. I'm not even kidding. (laughs) So, I think we can thank our old friend Copyright Law for for this, because that's why we have these fucking, like... Right reboots that nobody asked for is because well, he, they, they well, want more precedent to maintain the copyright. Right. Wait one second, sir. It's me, the guy who's gonna stand up for copyright. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not actually. I think copyright's a bunch of fucking bullshit, especially how long yeah. it lasts. But yeah, I really, I disagree with the core premise that that's the reason why these like endless reboots and remakes are happening, or or rather. That it's the sole reason. Because right. how many yeah, versions of be. Robin Hood have you seen in your life? And that's right. a non-copyright story. But the difference would be, like, Robin Hood being a, a timeless Western classic story. and like Oh, yeah, there's definitely a difference. Uh, I'm just saying that, like, the yeah. endless reboots and remakes and, like... Right. Yeah, I think like, Sherlock a lot is the, another, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. right. Well, a lot of these, like... Robin Hood stories are just remakes of earlier Robin Hood movies that are made darker and edgier. They're not really right. the original stories anymore. Right, right. Yeah, I think the... I was talking about this on the Continue cast the other day about how, like, uh, simple storytelling is no longer good enough, but I think it's making us, like, forget what good and bad is. Like, stories were meant to, like, remind us that, like, this is good and this is bad and now like everything is gray and like the world is already gray so like we kind of need like a compass i think not to sound like a crazy person but like i really think it's like oh, we're fucking long us past up. that <laughs> true <laughs> no, I, I, I think you're right josh like we 
stories are supposed to give us the tools to like help us find the patterns in everyday life and, right. and direct us and, and right. guide us. But right now, the world is very confusing, and we also just so happen to be obsessed with art that is maybe um, confusing. Yeah. yeah, confusing. Convol well, the art yeah. itself is is not like the art itself has no purpose in a way and art doesn't ha always have to have a purpose but like that the art doesn't know what it is half the time stories have to have some sort of like they don't have to have like a purpose exactly but they do have to have a message of some sort right yeah like an arc and, yeah like there's there are all those people that say like don't politicize this or that or whatever but like right uh, everything that a human being makes has to have some sort of a message right. behind it in one way or another whether you even mean for it to or not right we've been telling stories for a uh, couple hundred thousand years probably maybe longer depending on what you believe but like or shorter a re depending on what you believe or shorter depending <laughs> on the evidence <laughs> anyway anyway yeah but like you, you like there's there's a formula that works genetically in our minds like that's part of our 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 body and our our brain and like now we're kind of like not going in that direction and i i just think it's confusing us like like it's okay to have like movies that are like confusing like Darren Aronofsky where you're like I don't know what just happened like that's okay but like not everything can be like that you gotta still make movies that are like Robin Hood where you're like oh he robs from the rich and he gives to the poor that's the point yeah when you know? pop culture adapts like meta and postmodernism stuff but do but doesn't really know why it's doing it that's why it's doing things, it yes things are convoluted then, for no reason it right. is like a grinder as well and it's like yeah you gr you are grinding out these films that are like the same thing over and over and over again and then like you're reconstituting the sausage and putting it back in the grinder again right over you and over and over again it's and a dog eating its own vomit is what it yeah, is and like every time you try and reconstitute the sausage it's getting worse and worse right and yeah like adaptation is far different than um remake and sequel to me. Soft reboot, like, whatever the fuck euphemism they're using. Like, sure. You can adapt literally anything into a completely new and different story. Like the one that I'm immediately drawn to because I love it so much is Dragon Ball, which yeah. is Journey to the West. But it is completely its own thing. After right. It yeah. adapted into its own thing as, as time went on. And that's extremely valuable. Like using right. an adaptation as a stepping stone to make something original is like super easy because like you make the rules of your adaptation but right it's it's just much simpler to do than when trying to do it with a remake or a sequel because it's the you're difference in a box at that right. point it's the difference between standing on the shoulders of giants and remakes which is standing on the shoulders of yourself or people just like you like Whoa. like you're not you're not building the pyramid upward to to that to like betterment. You're just like at some point, like only like two people can stand on your show. Like like you get two remakes, right, and that's it. <laughs> but we're we're entering like like a fucking like Mobius strip of shit at this point. Yeah, because like there's also sort of this thing where it's like um, a, a, a work that's inspired by something in real life has just this has a more earnest feeling than a work inspired by another work where it's right like if, if you if you really like um, you know someone's paintings like you can make paintings that are like their paintings or you can go to the spot that inspired them to paint and feel the same right vibration. yeah yeah it's, it's also the difference in, in, like, if you like someone's paintings, you can make paintings that are like theirs, that use similar techniques, right. or you can remake their paintings. Mm. You're never yeah. going to capture the same thing that's in that original painting by doing it, like, doing your right. own version of it. You have to take what you've learned from seeing and loving that painting and apply it to your own worldview, your own experiences, Right. When I when I played like music and stuff, like that was always a thing like you struggle with. You're like, Well, I've been listening to a lot of this, so it's gonna sound like this, you know? Right. But like there's always that like like I think with music and if you're writing music and stuff there I guess it's a lot of, like drawing or painting, I don't know because I can't do those things, but like there's always that big part of you that's both like 
something that you're kind of proud of secretly, but more ashamed of, right? Like, I, like you never think like it's good, or at least I always was like, oh, I don't know, it doesn't sound good. But like, that's the yeah, part of the music sure. that makes it yours, you know? I think that's also in filmmaking too, where you can kind of tell if someone's a little too into watching movies, where every shot right. is just a remake of another shot from another movie, and it's like, right. great, you did the thing, but why don't you like, you know? walk around yourself and try and come up with some interesting shots or something. No, yeah, no, like, no what do you want to do? No matter what medium you're in, it's finding your own voice instead of trying to talk with someone else's. Yeah, but yeah. the companies that own the world now don't want that. They just want money. So <laughs> I saw a tweet earlier, and I don't... I saw somebody retweet a tweet earlier, and I don't know if he, like, listens to this or not, and I'm sorry, I'm not calling you out at all, but he retweeted this tweet that was like, um... If you feel like your schedule and your art is more important than the bottom line, don't tell me. I don't want to hear that. That's because he was a businessman, mm -hmm. and and like it was like your art is not more important than the finance than the end product. And I was How like, I was like, why you? are you? Re what is this? Like, yeah, is that's... this what people feel really? I th I think that's something people regurgitate because they want to look important, honestly. Yeah. Also, Twitter is an anger machine where people retweet yeah. stuff that makes them angry, and they don't endorse it, but they just make them right. Angry. <laughs> They're not using the retweet yeah. button correctly, which is, which is great because if you retweet something you hate, it like boosts yeah. it to this entire yeah. new audience. It's <laughs> yeah, perfect. Not, yeah, you're not retweeting it for the same reason why uh, somebody else is retweeting it. Why do we keep do like? I'm guilty of. I'm definitely guilty of doing that. I try to frame it as in like a fuck this context, but I try and do that. Oh yeah, no, all of us. Yeah, I'll yeah. respond to it. Yeah, like, I respond, but like I don't retweet stuff that I don't like because I learned right. that like it moves it up in the rankings of Twitter and it'll start showing up in people's searches and stuff and, if yeah. you start responding to it. And me and media companies know this, and I, I realize I fell into this trap like a day or two ago when like NBC or yeah. something was like, yes, uh, yes, that's what I was thinking of too. Yeah, that when they're like, there's a theory out there that millennials are stingy, and that's so right. millennials retweeted being like, we're not stingy, we we are us, we're we're yeah, not. So it got everywhere. Uh, I didn't click on the article, so I didn't give them, and I, if I did, I have ad block on, so I don't get their fucking click revenue or whatever. But like. <laughs> I, I, it got like ratioed real hard and usually, I mean, it got ratioed super hard. Oh, yeah. Like, I think there was like 230 retweets of it or something. They went on so. the fucking millennial program and decided yeah. to attack millennials. That's a great And you're right, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin's right, though. It, it is on purpose. They're they did, oh, they yeah. did it on fucking purpose. They're high-fiving sure. each other in the fucking marketing room right now. Being right. like, we just pulled it off. All those yeah. clicks that are going to the site is ad revenue, regardless of how you feel right. about it when you click the site. Right. Somebody clicked on it, right? So yeah. um, Sam might be able to get us back on track here. He continues. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just big business realizing nostalgia is more marketable than sex, or maybe there's some connection between the way we market familiar properties now and the way stories used to be passed down orally across generations until they became cultural touchstones. Maybe back in Babylonia, they were like, fucking stop rebooting Gilgamesh. We heard it already. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to you recite it down by the fire in the dead of night as the wind rustles the dead leaves about us again just because you put Chris Pratt in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's the second one. I think it's I think it's it's uh, greed and and corporatism and capitalism. That's what's doing it. It's I, that's all it is. I really wish my brain didn't immediately latch onto the two words nostalgia and sex. And now I'm like, when are we going to be nostalgic for sex? <laughs> are we gonna I be? already am, I Kevin. Am. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just I wake up that way sometimes. Remember sex? Oh, when when we cool, get to the fucking. When we get to the fucking future where Taco Bell owns all restaurants, that's when we'll be nostalgic for sex. Taco we'll be, Bell! <laughs> we'll be post-sex. Uh, Ew, fluid transfer! Ew. <laughs> maybe we're hardwired to cling to certain stories to help us reconcile with the trials of modern times, and those dastardly money men know just how to suck that sweet moolah out of the human condition. What do you think? I think you're dead on with that. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and and since we're living in like a time that's never happened before, we're just seeing like the perversion of of that, like the internet is being perverted in front of our eyes but with Josh, everything. But Josh, isn't everyone living in a time that hasn't happened before? Yeah, but this one's like, but this one's uh, like not super time traveling, bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> it, bro- it broke it broke an entire generation. Like, I mean, the internet broke the baby boomers. They were already fucked up, but it snapped their brains, dude. Like, yeah. it fucked them up. And and all the lead. Like, it was the- and the lead in the, oh, yeah. in the air. Well, the internet, yeah. for sure, like, the fucking internet waves in the air hit the lead in their bloodstream, and it just drove yeah. them insane. It pissed and- them off. For some reason, we all decided to be post-war around now, so I guess we don't do war so much anymore. Until we no, do right. a really big one. We don't do war until we're always doing war, and then we're still not doing war. Don't call it that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I think George Orwell just... I think he quoted George Orwell just now. <laughs> I think he said that exact quote. We're not doing war until we're always doing war. Until then, don't call it that. Um, 1984. 1984. <laughs> Sam continues. <laughs> On that note, you have uh, you two have both created fictional characters and worlds in Inksburg and Darinos, respectively. How would you feel if, by some stroke of luck, these became mega successful money machines, and as you got older, they were taken up by new talent and updated to keep up with future modern sensibilities? What if oh, Sid, man. Ugla, and Fred the Skull Peeler went to camp with Scooby-Doo? <laughs> I mean, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Uh, I would I would be more of the George Lucas now slash uh, guy from Community. What's his name? I can't remember his name. Um, oh, Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon. I mean, I probably would be more of that where I would just be like, "Fuck this," because it would <laughs> suck. I would be like, "This sucks," because it just um, takes over your life. Yeah. He he also continued in a in a way that seems very unfair to me since your characters got to go to camp with Scooby Doo. Yeah, who what does your ha- character get to What if with? Ham Piggins became some pervy director's metaphor for consensual bestiality? Uh, Why is mine so much worse, Sam? <laughs> it's me, Ham Piggins, boys. <laughs> that is for sure not what Ham Piggins sounds like. <laughs> Ham Piggins, voice. I mean, he sounds like a pervy metaphor for bestiality yeah. to me. Dude, can't wait hey, for P- fully hey, voice Piggins Ham Piggins. talks like this, boss. <laughs> No, he's way he's way gooier than that. He's, he's really. Gooey. I created the character, Kevin. <laughs> he's, he's made of bacon for Christ's sake. He's got to be gooier. Oh my God, I would Just not care him. for that. Sam is my. We're answer. corporatizing your your character yeah, right well, now. We're is, totally like, taking it from you. The thing is, I'm not going to let anybody else touch my character. It's like, I'm not gonna do anything like. Yeah, that I care to that level about for like a corporate overlord. Like, if some corporate right. overlord wanted to buy Inksburg right now, I would say no, right? Because I don't want to have to deal with that. I would rather be poor and have control over my own artistic output than be yeah some like corporate shill. I like, said it earlier. I'd rather be a poor and broke than be a poor doing what I hate. Guys, mm. I res- I respect that, and I love you both, and I think that's fine reasoning. If someone was like, I want to buy Hack for, uh, like, like, uh, I'm trying to think of that, probably like $50,000, I'd be like, 50k? Yeah. $50,000? Sure. Done. Easy. I was thinking you'd go like 5 mil. Yeah, I thought it was going to be pretty high. I'll just make another thing. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, there is that. There is that too. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't I know. It's been a long fucking road for me to get to these Inksburg characters. Like, I've spent a long time going through like story ideas and character ideas to finally land on these that I'm really happy with. I yeah, totally I guess it would like that. depend. I guess it would depend, right? Like, you'd, you'd have to like. That's why there's, like, a long courting period with a lot of these things, like, with authors who write books. Like, I know Sam Sykes has been working on, like, a, a something, I think, like, a show or something for his books, and mm-hmm. I think it just takes, like, the right person to do it. Like, if somebody wanted to do Darinos or something, like, they probably would get the joke, right? They probably would, oh, like, yeah. understand what it I was. Could, and If somebody wanted to do Inksburg and offered me money for it and everything, I guess I would try and make sure that I have creative control... Right, and but would if you I want could it? in any way, shape, and form, I would accept it because it'd be a good way to get it out there. And by the time somebody wants to reimagine it, I don't think I would care that much because I would be like so far beyond the story Inksburg making other stuff. Right. Yeah, I mean, a part of me would just be like, I mean, if it's like they wanted to do those characters in Scooby Doo or whatever the fuck, I'd be like, yeah. I, I think I, I would care. put my foot down if they were trying to do <laughs> ham piggins and bestiality. I feel yeah, like that no, would that's, be the end of it. Yeah. First off, there are no humans in Inksburg. <laughs> yeah. How's he gonna fuck a human? It doesn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm 30 years old and I live with my very cool parents, but I would like to move out, so I'm just gonna sell whatever it takes to do that. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's, you heard that's, it here I first, it. faceless corporations. If you want to butt fuck my friend Kevin financially, <laughs> it's open season. Yeah, baby. I'll be your I'll be your agent, Kevin. But like, we're gonna need to up those numbers a bit. You gotta sell yourself. Don't sell yourself short. Yeah, I'll Kevin's like, like fucking. You got a sandwich on you? <laughs> you think the Tim Russum is selling out? I'll do it for like five hundred. I'll do it. I'll, pretty much, I'll do pretty much anything for five hundred bucks right now. <laughs> anything? 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 Damn! I'll be yeah, right I got there, a proposal dude. for you after this podcast. Yeah, an indecent proposal. <laughs> you want to marry me? You'll get free health care. Uh, well, oh, yeah, shit, fuck yeah. yeah, dude. We'll have to we'll have to figure out some sort of like rules for polyamory, but <laughs> I'll get I'll get yeah. free health care and a free husband. Sweet polygamy. That's what I, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Free hus care. Oh, it will it will not be a cheap wedding. We're going all out. <laughs> oh God, never oh, mind. Jesus Christ, I'm not getting. No, I'm not. It. No Ken way. Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my peach colored flowers? Where are my peach colored rings? This my isn't peach. Rings? peach. This is off mauve. What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, oh god 500 bucks also <laughs> also i really enjoyed the gherk and burk bit from the enemy within episode so i made a little m-class family photo fan art hope you like it if you, if you yeah. guys like i said if you check twitter right now that will be up somewhere on our timeline hell yeah time to sign off keep on gherkin and burkin sign <laughs> sam lindstrom cosmo cosmo i can do this Mm -hmm. Cosmetological science officer on the USS Gossamer. Do you get that joke, guys? Yeah, because he brushes his hair. He's the red guy. Yeah, he's Gossamer's the big red monster, and Bugs Bunny brushes his hair and does his little and he shaves in the him water. into water. Oh, I love yeah. that bit. Gossamer, Fucking Sam, I love you. I love you, Sam. <laughs> Our uh, next email is from Jeff, spelled wrong, from Boston. <laughs> wrong Jeff. Geoff. Joff. And it's, uh, Jeff has a pitch it or ditch it for them Trek boys. Holy fuck. Hey, Josh and Jeff, parentheses, spelled the wrong way. Did he spell them with G's? Uh, he spelled my name, J-E-F-F, -F, and said it spelled the wrong way. Oh, wow. am I? I've never seen Josh spelled differently, but I mean, I'm Josh. sure there's somebody. Jo Josh. <laughs> Uh, first time, long time. I'm loving all continue. I've been loving conti all continue based content from high school. Y'all make me laugh every week, if not every day. Thank you. Um, this is not a continue based podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Legally I started not watching, affiliated. I started, <laughs> watch, I started watching Trek following syndication station, but soon fell off after enduring much of season one of TNG. Yeah. Mm. After watching more with my girlfriend, who was raised on Trek, I gave it another try and saw that there was a perfect podcast to accompany it. I wonder what that is. Oh, man. Is it this one? It probably isn't. It, oh, no. <laughs> no, guys. It's, it totally is. Oh, oh, oh it is. Kevin. Oh, sweet. Thank you guys so much for all the things you create. It makes a difference to so many people. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Anyway... <laughs> When did the anyway thing? Was that fantasy fiction? Was I think that it was a fantasy thing? fiction thing. Yeah. The the awkward transition. Yeah, it's just like, it's just let's bounce. Yeah, it's we're a, going to the next thought. It's a special edition of Boston Sean's Pitch It or Ditch It, featuring <laughs> special <laughs> guest host Jeff from Boston. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. He this really sold it. A, this is Boston. a TNG Pitch It or Ditch okay. It. Okay. Okay. The Enterprise has picked up an alien envoy to escort to a peace conference on his home planet. The envoy's alien culture prides themselves on growing the beardliest of beards. What? So the Enterprise fellas decide to pull a no-shave November before reaching their destination <laughs> and show appreciation to the envoy's culture. Wouldn't it be like no-shave stardate 5.2-218? Rolls right off the tongue. Or whatever November would be in the stars. 
Riker, who claims to have uh, Riker, who claims to have the best beard, brags initially. However, after two weeks of travel, there is a transporter incident, which leaves Riker whiskerless. What? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> In a Samson-esque turn of events, Riker loses all his charisma and becomes a shell of his former self. Damn. <laughs> the baby-faced Frakes must then witness Worf get shaggier than ever. Picard pull out nice cropped chops. Jordy bring back the fuzz. Data oh, yeah. stroke his beard. Thusly. And Struck even thusly. god dang Wesley produce a pass. What? Beard. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> even the male extras on set are sporting some kind of facial hair. Damn. I was instructed to cut this B plot if I wanted, but I don't. Okay. Picard advises the envoy on his upcoming meeting, which concerns a rising civil war and treatment of deadly diseases. Meanwhile, Riker wallows in self-pity as he believes he is less of a man and cannot properly act as first officer. <laughs> the envoy reassures him that a man is more than his beard. It's not the beard on the outside that counts. It's the beard on the inside, guys. Damn, that's Everybody so, knows that, right? <laughs> that's so much wisdom, it hurts. Uh, rather, it's how one treats those around him. Oh. Mm. He finishes reminding Riker of his impressive track record as first officer. The envoy takes Riker to the talk uh, to the talks with him and asks him to act as a negotiator from the Federation. Riker sacks up and remembers how to carry himself. <laughs> After some days of peace talks, Riker thwarts an assassination attempt and finds a middle ground for both sides, thus ensuring day. lasting peace and a partnership with the Federation. Wow. The episode ends on the Enterprise with Riker noticing a five o'clock shadow in the mirror, smiling slightly, and picking up a razor to clean his <laughs> smug mug. What an amazingly ridiculous premise for a great Star Trek <laughs> episode. You're playing with fire, though. You're playing with fire, because if he shaves his beard, it's going to be a bad episode. Yeah. yeah, it's true. You're, like, rolling the dice on yeah. this with some weighted dice right out yeah. the gate. Yeah, you're... you're 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 a uh, tempting fate. Um, I I have an idea for the assassination attempt. Sure. And I think it's got to involve poisoned soup, and okay. Riker just has a little more of the soup than everyone else because he's not spilling it right directly into his beard. And oh, so they know. <laughs> and he's the first to realize <laughs> the soup is poisoned. I have had. A, <laughs> I've had a death. The soup has gone bad. Do not <laughs> eat the soup. I was thinking it was going to go the exact opposite way, where like the dude with the beard gets it all in his beard. So once they discuss, they figure out that it's like a deadly soup. Yeah. That they can't get it out of his beard, so they have to fucking surgically remove Move it from beard. his beard. Yeah. There like, we go. Damn. You have to do that with a beard, man. I mean, we all know we all have beards. Yeah. You have to surgically remove that bitch when you have yeah. soup. When I eat ramen, I have to eat it alone because I'm a, just a disgusting <laughs> fuck, dude. I uh, I recently trimmed my giant beard down to a manageable length, and I have I've yeah. so much fucking ramen. It's great, <laughs> dude. Oh, yeah. When I, it's like winter time and my beard is like full blown homeless person beard, and I'm eating ramen, I'm just like I'm a fucking nasty bitch, <laughs> like. <laughs> Just fucking beard debris for days. Yeah, I've never... Like, I keep my beard fairly trimmed, so the only thing I have to deal with is, like, the sides of my mustache get in my mouth sometimes. Yeah, that happens all the time yeah. with me. But that's yeah. mo that's mostly it. I keep everything super trimmed up. I've been going in and, like, getting razors and, like, shaving the cheeks part with a oh, razor. That's smart. that's smart. You know, instead of just doing, like, the trimmer. Just to feel... It just feels good, you know? You gotta treat yourself. Treat yourself. <laughs> I didn't shave for like a year and a half uh, before my last shave, so yeah, it was like very long. And yeah, when it's like February and shit around here, my beard is like completely insane because it's, <laughs> it's cold. A lot. How it's did the much. three of us end up on a podcast together? Just all three beardly as fuck. How did that we're happen? Hot. We're hot as fuck, and hot people fuck each other. I mean, go on podcasts. Of course. That's what I meant, guys. Also, yeah. maybe fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying it as a joke, but I mean, if you're... I mean, if you want to. I mean, if you're into can, it, I mean. Yeah. I mean. Uh, for the record, Bearded Riker is better than Babyface. Keep yeah. on pod trekking, Trek boys. <laughs> Sincerely, G off spelled the right way from Boston. <laughs> Thank yes. you. I don't mean to steal your Bostonian thunder, Sean. Let's have a beer about it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've been to Boston, and every time I've been around beer, someone's wanted to fight me. I mean, 
They both say they're from Boston, but that can mean they're from uh, not yeah. Boston. That's like how I'm from Philly, right? Like, I'm kind of right, not. Right. I've been told. I've been told by uh, a Philly girl one time. She was very adamant that I was not from Philly. And I was like, all right. I was like, I got it. You're right. What am I going to say? No? <laughs> all right. Bye. All right. Please don't. Please stop following me. I'm going home now. <laughs> G E O F F is like the evil mirror universe version <laughs> of Jeff. It's it's kind of a goofy way to spell it, but you it's know. how it's originally spelled. He's right. It's old, That's it's the old original English. spelling. But then people wisened the fuck up and decided it's spelled Jeff. It sounds like J E F F, right? Jeff. Yeah. And now some people are trying to fucking like put me in the ground like a dinosaur, and they're like, Jeff, you mean J E F? <laughs> and I'm like, it's well, fuck, I fall behind the times. Damn, you gotta change your names, dude. I'm getting too redundant with the double Fs now. I gotta change my name to Joss, like Joss Whedon. Ugh. Whoa. Ugh. It's me, Joss Whedon. It's me, Joss Henderson. <laughs> it would make Paul's life easier because he could never get my email right. Because <laughs> my name has two H's next to each other. It confuses the shit out of him. <laughs> And I'm like, but my name has two H's. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, it shouldn't be hard at I think, all. I think Kevin's name should be Kev, because he's already in the room. We know that. So <laughs> Kev, right? <laughs> what? He's not Kev out. He's yeah. Kev in. He's oh, Kev in. We already know he's in. So yeah. Kev. Kev. Yeah, why are we wasting so much goddamn time with the second half of my name? Let's I don't go. know, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking sick of it. I got shit to do. I'm a millennial. <laughs> Our next email is from Yakub. Yakub, yeah. who has uh, informed me very sternly that okay. I was saying his name wrong for a really long time. <laughs> oh, am I saying it right though? Uh, it's apparently Yakub. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Not Yakub. Oh, and well, you we're can from go America. fuck yourself. No, I'm kidding. I'll say it right. <laughs> we can't um, even say Jeff right around here. So fucking. We're yeah, just we don't idiots. know what Jeff is spelled. So. We're just bad. <laughs> we apologize. Uh, it's entitled "I Don't Have a Witty Title." That's pretty witty. <laughs> Which episodes of Trek would be ruined irreparably if one of the characters was in the bathroom at a crucial moment? In the Tears of the Prophets, Jadzia Dax goes to the bathroom before she goes to the Bajoran Temple, etc., etc. You can that would figure make, that out if you know what happens in that episode. That would make the, the whole series better, honestly. <laughs> it really would. We wouldn't have to endure... I mean, not endure. I don't want to be that mean. We wouldn't have to have Vezri, which I would prefer... The writers didn't know what to do with her. We discussed yeah. that on the other episode. Yeah, I would prefer Jadzia. In the inner light, Picard is taken over by the probe while in the bathroom. The crew is <laughs> angry at him for occupying the bridge's restroom for 30 minutes. Picard tries to explain, but he's also embarrassed to admit he had a poopy butt for 60-something years. <laughs> a poopy butt. Yours, Smokey, Yakub, USS Burt Reynolds. <laughs> We name him after our heroes, man. <laughs> man, thankfully he got a ship named after himself. If there's no that USS guy. Tom Selleck, I'll tell you that much. Nah, there should be, though. <laughs> so what episodes would be ruined irreparably if one of the characters was in the bathroom at a crucial moment? I can only think of ones that would be better, like the one where the ship gets like hit with that strand or whatever, and it fucks them up, and just like, <laughs> like one of them's in the bathroom, and they're like, guys? <laughs> guys? Like they don't know what's going on. Of, I can only think of DS9 episodes because if, if a lot of DS9 plots are very oh by by chance this person was on our group at the time. Right, like, right. Like give give Odo like a fucking stomach virus and suddenly he's not reuniting with his people. On the... you got to give Ogo, Odo a stomach first. <laughs> <laughs> he's experimenting with stomachs this week. Yeah, and diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> What about the episode where they go down to the planet and find the other Will Riker, but Will was in the bathroom? <laughs> that was so they're like, in. Will, what are you doing down here? <laughs> yeah. You done shitting, Will? What? Like, what if they went down to the surface of the planet, but Will went to the bathroom on the planet, and then the other Will came out, came and they out. were like, hey, let's beam back. Yeah, now it's like a fucking sitcom. Now it's like a crazy sitcom. <laughs> and then dude. they have to go on a date with the same lady. Yeah, they both go <laughs> down. With fucking uh, whoever. That's the one that came to mind for me. What do you guys got? 
I don't know if I one would ruin it. I think it would add a level of realism. I'm all for this bathroom scenario. <laughs> I kind of want just an episode that's a O'Brien must suffer episode, but it's just O'Brien on the toilet. Oh my god! And it's just Keiko muffled in the other room, yelling at him about some random. She's shit in the that other room, like you gotta go to work. You're late. No, that's Molly's a gotta episode. go to school. <laughs> yeah. And Molly's like, Daddy, I got transported to a planet. And you're pooping. <laughs> I, I, I went through a time sphere and became an old lady now, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. And he's pooping with the door open like a true eye. Like, <laughs> he holds his foot against the like, <laughs> elevator door. It just keeps trying to close and it's like, oh, nope. Keep it open. That's a fucking stereotype about Irish people. I didn't know. <laughs> I never heard that either. <laughs> I just made it up, but it's okay. Dude, I shut the door in my house and nobody lives here with me. I fucking yeah. shut the door, like, always. I shut the door when I'm by myself in the yeah, apartment, so. Me too. What but I don't even open when I'm not. Yeah, there could be. There could be a ghost. Yeah, there, there could be a fucking ghost watching. You don't want to be improper. <laughs> fucking That's poopy true. ghost looking at my poops. Don't be looking at me pooping, Casper. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> pop, pop, you dead ass bitch haunting me. <laughs> Way to right, die, fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> we were, they were in the Discord. Like I stopped by for the first time in ages. They were talking. Yeah, we about, both in there. Weirdly, we both showed yeah, up. Yeah, we that ended up there at the same time. I think it was before you showed up. They, they were talking about Hogwarts houses, and they were. Yeah. Somebody said, "What would the Trek boy houses be?" Hmm. And somebody said, uh, "The." It's, ah, fuck, I forget what it was, but I wanted one of the houses to be bucket pussies, and nobody would let me. <laughs> bucket pussy. <laughs> nobody would let you. They were all like, no. No. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks for that email. That was a really great email. <laughs> it was awesome. Our next email is from Ben Beeler. Ben uh, Beeler. And it is Beeler. entitled, etc. Oh, okay. And it begins, to Festive as shit. <laughs> Damn. Damn. And, uh, he writes, first time in a long time here. Recently, we were talking about the Orville on the Discord, and it got me thinking, when are you going to do an M Class etc. about this? Great question. We were just talking about this. We were just talking about this. I'd like to take a quick moment to let people know what M Class etc. is. Good if idea. you know some Star Trek related stuff, like maybe some books, maybe some fan films, maybe some comics. Maybe stuff like Galaxy Quest, which we've already done. Yeah, that thought, was great. And you thought, what are the opinions of the Trek boys on these Star Trek tangentially related things? Star Trek adjacent. Then you can find out for as low as a dollar a month on our Discord. At what? Patreon. Or our Patreon, sorry. Yeah. Patreon.com slash podcast where we have a little show called M Class Etc. We've only done an episode so far, but it was on Galaxy Quest, which is the best Star Trek tangentially related thing. It's practically Star Trek. It's so good. It's so fucking good. We dive, we do a deep dive into it and talk about literally everything, including yeah. how much I love the name Rock Anger Solo. <laughs> I love it so much. And fucking, uh, what's his name playing him? Oh my god. Guy Fleegman. Guy Fleegman. I love that name too. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Fleegman. <laughs> That's a real name, right? We like yeah. find out that it's like the dude's yeah. name who like Yeah. They named the character after Guy Fleegman, like a real person. Like Sam Rockwell plays him and he's yeah. fucking amazing in it. Sam Rockwell's great and everything. But yeah, if you want to hear us talk about that, not we're probably gonna do the Orville at some point. So yeah. check that shit out on uh patreon.com slash M class Yeah, tell us like what epi like should we do like all of the or like I mean we can't do all of them because we have, we have our enough we yeah, have like fifty like shows. Three we do. seasons of this show so yeah. far, I think. Maybe four. Maybe maybe there's like episodes that are good. Because I don't I haven't watched it, so I don't know. I think there's only two seasons, but still that's a lot. Yeah. Um, I'd avoided the series originally because I was afraid it would be Family Guy in Space, a concern a lot of the folks on the Discord echoed. But after seeing Season 2, it looked like the show is going in a more serious direction with some comic relief tossed in and a generally casual attitude. Yeah. In hindsight, it looks like the Mocklin trial episode from Season 1 is more indicative of what they're trying to do than a lot of the rest of Season 1. If yeah, I heard else, that too. 
If nothing else, I would be interested to hear your perspectives on Tribunal, Season 1, Episode 3, the aforementioned Mocklin trial episode. Well, there you go. He just I just said that, and then he said it because I didn't know. But now we know. Thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, do that. Apparently, the episode is called About a Girl, Not Tribunal. I even had a tab open for checking that in. Signed, Captain Desrath, USS Lollipop F. The F is now for fuck's sake. <laughs> is it, like, named of About a Girl... Like for the Nirvana song, is that Maybe. the reference? Maybe I don't know. Is that? Is that? I don't know. Cause... <laughs> Josh, I don't know. Somebody, uh, don't know. does somebody want to find out? Can we get somebody on this? We have any interns? I don't know. Kevin, guys. Kevin, am I am I interning now? No. <laughs> <laughs> really, Dude. you're the same rank as us in like M class lore. You're. An I thought he was a commander, wasn't he? I'm an admiral, bitch. What? You're, the you're fuck? an admiral. You're not Admiral Orem. That's a character. <laughs> Damn, dude. Am, am you just make yourself. Amentai. <laughs> Amentai. That's funny. Am you're Ensign Kevin Cole, and you're <laughs> sent to. You're an inspector from Starfleet, sent here because you also suck. <laughs> Wow. You suck just as bad as we do. That's why you're yeah. here. <laughs> Welcome to the party, I guess. Thank you for having me. Yo, if you ever watch the Futurama Star Trek episodes on, yeah. your, on your... Oh, we oh, can we do should. that. Oh. Fuck yeah. yeah. Hell you yeah. Know. 50 Quatloos. <laughs> let you... Did you say let you know or let you want it? I mean, you can both. do both if you both. want. Both. Yeah, no, that would be I great. I always feel I would love bad it. having you on stuff we're going to put on the, the fucking Patreon because we get paid for it. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to pay you in, like, night eggs. Oh, you don't have to pay. All right, well. We, we could pay we'll, you we'll, in money for doing yeah, it as well. Can, we <laughs> could pay you in, like, like hugs. Ooh. <laughs> Kisses. Like, warm, fuzzy hugs. Sword fights with wieners. What? That's <laughs> not work at all that's fun all of these are currency <laughs> it's uh yeah season uh, one episode three about a girl i will keep that in mind that sounds yeah. like something we could definitely do for i didn't even etc i didn't even think about the futurama shit that's fucking great that's smart kevin that's why you're the same rank as us yeah that's why you're <laughs> that's why I'm moving up I was, I was a fucking intern and now i'm an ensign <laughs> All that's in one day. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty quick up the ladder chain you're going. You are going well, to be Admiral Warren soon. Admiral, so. Yeah, workload got to you, though. <laughs> Kevin is, like, going native a little bit. Like he th he's, yeah. he's like, I am an Admiral. <laughs> he's just like everyone who writes in. <laughs> yeah, everybody who writes in makes themselves Admirals. Supreme Admiral Commander of the Fleet. Fleet Captains. Yeah, fucking... That's yeah. where all the really great booties are at. You know? <laughs> all the butts. On on uh, space dock on ESD or space yeah. dock. Or the space dig. The um, sli <laughs> the slightly less gravity perks up the booties. Thanks for the suggestion, Ben. That's a great fucking suggestion. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. And thanks for the email as well. We really appreciate it. Um, I love it. Our next you. email. Our next email is from Spivzy. I know him. This is and it is entitled. No subject. Damn, they're hitting home runs with these subjects today. <laughs> How mysterious. By the power of Trek, I command an email to be sent. Jesus Christ. Hello, Trek friends. I've got to pitch it or ditch it for you. Fuck yeah. Yay. I posted this one on the Discord recently and got a pretty positive response, so I wanted to see what you guys thought and to see if you can punch it up a little. Okay. Okay. It begins... Data gets an alert on his screen that a planet in a nearby system is experiencing a huge burst in seismic activity, Damn. prompting the Enterprise to head over to find out what's happening. Sexy. They find a <laughs> uh, they find a planet in complete collapse. Earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanoes erupting all over. That sounds fun. And there are thousands of life signs. Okay. Uh, side note, you guys ever fucking notice that they always talk about, like, tens of thousands of people and planets? Yeah. Like, that's the size of a planet's population? <laughs> yeah, I always I always thought about that. Like, were they are they, like, colonies or, like, what? Did we just, like, like super fuck and that's why we have billions? Like, everybody else has tens of thousands? Maybe we're just, like, 
Maybe in the future we're much more like fucking is for fun and not for baby making. Who knows? And when we tell other like uh, civilizations, yeah, we had like six billion people on Earth. They're like six what? Six, six, six billion? billion? Do you mean what did you six thousand? What are you saying? Well, the Denobulans have like fourteen billion on their planet. Jesus fuck! They're like crazy. They're like rabbits, dude. Mm. Jesus. Uh, as the ship gets closer, they receive what they think is a distress call, but it's someone telling them to leave. And if they land on the planet, they'll all be killed. Okay. okay. Kind of makes you want to land there. adamant about assisting. But they're told to either get the hell away or be shot down. Okay. The ship retreat, retreats to a safer distance, and they watch helplessly as the planet implodes. The crew reflects on what they just witnessed, when suddenly... Rocks and debris start knitting back together, and the planet is remade completely whole again. What the fuck? <laughs> Jordy sees there's some kind of energy signature coming from the planet. He doesn't know what it is, but he is able to pinpoint where it's coming from. They mask themselves from the frequency that contacted them before, and an away team is beamed down. On the surface, they find a machine that seems to be the cause of the energy signature, and the man from before, a scientist, who again tells them to get off the planet before it's too late. Get off my moon! <laughs> uh, he explains to them what's happening. They're on a doomed planet, and it's been doomed once every 12 hours for the past 10 years. Oh, that sounds horrible. The machine sends the planet back in time every time it's destroyed, and he's the only one who knows or has any memory of it. Oh, whoa, this is Twilight Zone. <laughs> Mainstream technology on the planet isn't advanced enough to get everyone off the planet safely, so he put them on a constant loop that only affects the planet and its atmosphere, which is Man. why he told the Enterprise to leave. If they had remained too close, they would have been caught in it, too. This is very, yeah. like, uh, Wizard of Oz, like, uh, Futurama, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Yeah, I like yeah. this. The Futurama episode where he jumps off that building, but like the time machine, like only sends him back ten seconds, and it's like oh, right. like that. Yeah. Uh, of course, the away team refuses to leave without attempting to help the man in this planet. Jordy and Data manage to quadruple the machine's output, sending them back in time forty-eight hours instead of just twelve, giving them enough time to call in some evac shuttles and get people off the planet safely. They can't save everyone, but they'll be able to save the race. With 12 hours to go before the planet's destroyed again, the scientist has the decision, has to make the decision if he'll either stay with his people as they have their final hours over and over again, or he'll just let them die. Or okay. a third option, leave the planet with the evacuees and leave the machine running while he's gone. Damn. I would... Hmm. I would make it so the machine, like, he could either break the machine and try to save them like that's his gambit right or like he gets stuck doing it and like there's no solution i feel like that like this is like a one of those like well we'll figure it out later type of things and yeah, I, don't, the way, I don't the way he's written it is definitely like either he leaves them to figure it out later or yeah. he stays to figure it out later or he lets them all die i i would have him just like that's his life now because like I I don't know, there. I like that. I don't like them being evacuated. I think that like he like, because I I would probably make it so like the like the Enterprise is like oh the nearest ship is like forty light years away. It's gonna take them like three days to get here. But we don't have three days, you know. Like I don't know. I like the yeah. idea that they save part of the race like they only have so many shuttles we're talking like a couple hundred people tops yeah yeah it can, like 99% yeah. of the planet is gonna die right and it's the only thing they can do but then the question like I, I realized this when I was reading it the question comes in why not just send another ship tomorrow if right. the machine's on they're gonna be there yeah they'll be there right uh yeah I mean I, I guess think it has could... to be that the machine is breaking down and there's no way to fix there's it. no way to fix it yes I think it's got to be a bummer. Like, I think yes. it has to be the yes. planet just has to die. Like, there's no holding back time. Right. You have to respect that you fucked up and this is the end. Like, Dude, right. That would be a great, that would be Agreed. a great, like, late episode, like, thing we learn. Like, Star Trek always has, like, a part of the episode where we think we've got the solution and then we learn that that's not it and we have to start yeah. over. Can't cheat death, right? The, yeah, the way to like, figure it is they think the machine is breaking down and that's right. the problem. 
but towards the end of the episode, they realize that time is writing itself, and there's nothing the machine is going to be able to do. Yeah, like, on the quantum level, the universe yeah. is, like, breaking the planet down, and there's nothing to reconstitute mm -hmm. or whatever. Some some Star Trek nonsense, right? Like they, Yeah, they realize they can save, like, a hundred people, maybe, out yeah. of, like, the millions or billions or whatever, and that's the best they're going to be able to do. And yeah, because the, the Enterprise... Episode, yeah. M maybe, like, the, one of the elders or something says, like... At least our people have a chance now. Right. At least we can yeah. finally live our own lives the way they're meant to be now. And maybe some of them are like, thank God this is over. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> like, that's, this I, sucks. That's a good line I just thought of because I'm yeah. great. Uh, it's <laughs> now we can finally live the rest of our lives. Yeah. Nah, I had something that's like that. That's so good. Damn. Where, like, I was going to have the main scientist guy be like, how will I live with myself? And have them be like, you won't have to. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Data, now is not the time to try out your fucking Marx Brothers-esque comedy. <laughs> I will turn off my subroutine of vaudeville, Captain. <laughs> A cha 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 da Piani deleted. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. It's very, uh, uh, Majora's Twilight Mask, Zone. Twilight yeah. Zone. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's cool. I like that. that I think was it's cool. a great episode. And I, I like think that, that these guys and myself are correct in that, like, it does have to be, like, a bummer. the machine has to fuck up. It has yeah. to stop working. And the planet has to be destroyed. There's kind of that episode where, with the hologram planet, right? That's, yeah, what is, is that kinda. TNG? Like, that's Voyager. That's Voyager? Is yeah. it? Yeah. With the little girl? Is that Voyager? Uh. I, I'm pretty certain that's Voyager. You know, the the other thing I'd punch this episode up with is we need a B-plot where Jordy is writing Oh, to... it's Deep Space Nine. Sorry. That's right. It's Deep Space Nine. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. We need a B-plot where Jordy's writing to Playboy, right? Like, he's trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Playboy's still around? <laughs> Jesus, why? <laughs> He's trying. He's trying to get a. He's trying to get his letter published in there, and he he just can't, he's like trying to ask Riker for help because hmm. he's never really had a crazy sexual experience. He just wants to get published. Yeah, that's the B plot. That's the B plot. <laughs> Where did that B plot come from, if I may ask? Hey, right. Well, you know, you need something a little offbeat if it's gonna be if it's gonna be a huge bummer. <laughs> Man, I would the want this whole episode, episode to be like a fucking bummer. Like at the end of it, you're just staring <laughs> thousand yard stare at your TV. Like life is meaningless. Yeah, maybe there's something in the beginning with Jordy and like the warp core. Some breaks in the warp core, and like there's a line like, "Well, you know, you run something long enough, it's gonna happen." Like uh, some it's sort perfect. Of, yeah, it's fucking it's perfect. Like some metaphor, you know, for like shit. And then he's like, "Hey Riker, help me get in this titty mag." And Riker's like, "Hey, I've been meaning to talk to you." You know that there's just tits <laughs> everywhere. Like, you can yeah, just program like, tits. But you can use the holodeck, but also, you could just go to Ryzen and buy a Horgon. Like, someone will fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah, they'll, fine. those hot Ryzeans will just fuck you. Like, that's what they do. <laughs> See, like, how great of a plot would that, a B plot would that be? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not backing down, so he might be right. <laughs> I mean, if he's he confident hard enough, that means he's right. <laughs> he's confident, so maybe he knows what he's talking about. Uh, I'm going I think with it's it. a great story, Spibsy. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, well, he finishes the email by saying, how's that? I think it'd need a B-plot. That's obviously what of. <laughs> it's, it's Kevin's B-plot. It's some stuff about the other people who live on the planet. I can't decide if they know how close they are to destruction or not, or how they choose who gets evacuated, but I think it'd be a fun episode. Yeah, you'd have to decide you'd... if they know. I, I would make them know, because you'd have to have some of them who were like, we're gonna die, and they're afraid of death, and you'd have to have some of them who are like, this is fucking literally hell. Like, I do not yeah. want to do this anymore. It's true. Like, when they try and, like, ask the people on the planet what they want yeah. to do, it would be completely split. It'd be chaos. Be, people would want to keep going, people would want to die, yeah. It, this just reminded me, I think... Fuck, I think it may have been Spivs. The I don't know. I don't want to attribute it to him if I don't know. But I got like a curious cat question of somebody asking, uh, "What would happen if like Kal El, like Superman, had landed on Earth during Federation times? Would right. he have been Superman?" 
And I was like, no, he would have just joined the Federation. He wouldn't like, have. He would have been, been like, been I'm super- Kryptonian. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. He would have just been like, yeah, I'm from this place. He would have joined the Federation, and like, uh, for sure, the Borg would have had like something to do with Brainiac destroying Krypton. Yeah. Actually, no. The I, the thing is, he pointed out that Krypton would be in the Gamma Quadrant. Okay. And it would be a world controlled by the Founders. And okay. they destroyed... Like, I think I came up with the idea that they destroyed Krypton because they were afraid of what would happen if the Kryptonians went under a yellow sun. yellow sun, sun. yeah. That's so they smart. obliterated Krypt- Klyp- Krypton, and that's why, like, there were no ships for anybody to get off the planet. The Founders had made it so they weren't allowed to have space travel. Yeah, like, they just, they just policed them. Or they shot the ships down or whatever the fuck, right? So they would have this, like... The Kal-El goes to Earth in his little spaceship with a computer, so they have like these star charts of the Gamma Quadrant before they even get there. Yeah, it would change the whole fucking Dominion War. Also, he could just punch their fucking spaceships out of space. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even need a ship. He could just like be a ship, just like Captain Marvel, just flying through ships, right? Yeah, he just fucking like he flies up to the Dominion ships and just punches them into a sun. <laughs> and just- Explodes. The Dominion War would have been over a much sooner. Ah, that'd be sweet. <laughs> Dominion mode on God mode. Dominion War on God mode. Dude, that'd be crazy. Where's that comic book? I would fuck it. Like, I finished out answering the question by saying I would give anything to be able to write and draw this comic. That'd be awesome, dude. It's, it's just, like, pure, like, fan fantasy, right? But, fuck like, it's yeah. cool shit. Um, Trek on, you crazy diamonds. Signed, Captain Spivzy of the USS Shit Pants. <laughs> <laughs> All one word. Is that like... Shit Pants. Is, uh, maybe it's from I, like a different planet. I don't know. I'm having trouble not saying it like, Shit Pants. Shit Pants. <laughs> yeah. Like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the new ones. Shit, you oh, pants. For I know, what, sure. what gen are they on? Like 20 or something? I don't oh, fuck, I don't even know. It might be 10 at this point. Is it 10, Kevin, or 11? I, th- I think it's 8. 8. 8? Yeah. What well, are they, they going to do? They remade for 10? every gen already, so. Yeah. I'm only. I'm, a, I'm one. I only got to one. And the last one Come I played. The last one I played, like, all the way through was, like, 4. Oh, and I tried to play 5 and 6 and couldn't get into either of them. Yeah. I played 1, 2, and X. Those, those are the ones I played. And X isn't 10. No. No. What's X? That's confusing. X is Pokemon seven, X and maybe? Y. Because they're named like Red and Blue, or like Ruby and Emerald, yeah. and they made X and Y. Oh. They were running out of two things? <laughs> I guess. The new Sir, one's called- we've run out of two things! Yeah, the new one's called Sword and Shield, which is pretty fucking dope. That's Shwing. cool. Because Sword and Shield is the best oh, loadout. Josh, the new one's going to have raids. I heard about this. Don't can, tempt me, Pokemon Frodo. raids? Yeah, you yeah. can team up and fight a giant Pokemon with your friends. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Finally! It's what I've been looking for. Why isn't there a Pokemon MMO? Like, for real. Like, why isn't there one? Because they don't want to put the money... Well, they don't really want to put the money into it, because, like, why would you? You already right. make a billion, fulfillion dollars just you don't making have the to same try. game over and over But, I mean, again. do they know about MMOs and how crazy addicting they are? And people I mean, just Pokemon- give you money? <laughs> Pokemon Go is essentially an MMO. Yeah. It, dude, I remember when it first came out, and, like... It was amazing. It was, it was really cool. Like, I went outside oh, yeah. and to play, and, like, man, people were just outside, and I was like... Oh, there's like people outside. It was like 9/11 never happened. Yeah, dude, <laughs> holy shit, you're right. It was like people weren't afraid of their neighbors. It was a different world when Pokemon was, Go first it started. It was cool. It seriously was. Like holy you would drive shit. past the park in Huntington, West Virginia, and there would just be a horde of human beings yeah. with a fucking zombie apocalypse running after a Pidgey. Or something. It was like it was like Halloween in summer because kids were just like running around. It was like it was like late summer. It was like nice and warm yeah. out. It was all college students. Yeah, it was cool, dude. <laughs> And, like, we didn't know how it worked yet, and we were still, like, talking with each other, being like, oh, man, I think there are water Pokemon by the river. Yeah, like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's fucking rad, man. It was. It was rad. Pokemon Go is a great game. It gets yeah, a bad rep. It does, but it was fun. 
It's I hear it's coming back. I hear I I I see a lot more people in my Paul, friend group playing it now. Yeah, Paul said he was playing it again the other day. Yeah, and I was yeah like, a bunch uh, of my friends are playing it back in Huntington. Like I don't know anybody here, so I don't know. Well, I'm still <laughs> addicted to fentanyl, so. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, Elder, Elder Scrolls. It's not uh, quite heroin. <laughs> morphine? Maybe morphine, morphine is a better analogy. That's what it is, isn't, yeah. fe- isn't fentanyl, like, super fucking deadly? Yeah, That's if you like, take, like, two, like, two grains too much, you fucking yeah, die. Yeah, I mean, if you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I don't want to be a bitch. Maybe I should do it. You better do some fentanyl, everybody. That's Shit. all I'm saying. Shit. <laughs> Oh god! Our, our next email is from Fedco, <laughs> who, in is case you forgot, is a Vulcan. Vulcan. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, he's Vulcan. It is. It's entitled "Petition for the Renaming of the Plant-Based Symbiotic Parasite of Serata 4. Okay. Uh, he also sent a longer version of this. Come on now. <laughs> Come a longer on, version. Um, I do enjoy your emails, though, so I'm going to read it, not the long <laughs> version. Um. <laughs> Ensign Pennington, Ensign Henderson, <laughs> Trek Boys. Hi. The planet of Serata 4 is home to a remarkable life form, a thorned plant that seeks out warm-blooded life that it might puncture said warm-blooded creature's exterior and infect it with a parasite that lives within its thorns, seen in figures A and B. <laughs> is this I'm doing thing? a different Vulcan voice. You guys know? <laughs> yeah, I did notice. It's great. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There are figures yeah. A and B, by the way. <laughs> Is this the thing that Riker know. gets stung by that one time? Um, the flashback episode where he goes back in, in like, has a flashback episode? Is that I these? think so. I don't want to get stung by this fucking shit. Um, while the parasite nearly managed to claim the life of the first officer of Starfleet's flagship vessel, you were right. I was right. Ooh. None have seen fit to give such a remarkable life form and appropriate name. As such, it is illogical that this situation be remedied. Er, shit. As such, it is logical that this situation be remedied by way of assignment of a logical name. The name that I now propose for consideration is the Zombramble. Ooh. While this name may seem outlandish and illogical, the reason that follows will prove to be otherwise. Are Vulcans known for their portmanteau? Like, that's a pretty good... It's a big about. fucking Vulcan Yeah, thing, it is man. a good portmanteau. The Vulcans good portmanteau. love them. It's my favorite cheese. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me so much, but it sure did. Um, I just... I took a big drink before... <laughs> before he said it. <laughs> While the effects of the parasite are not a direct resemblance to the traditional understanding of zombification, it does specify tar- specifically target the nervous system of its host, making its way along the central nervous system until it renders the host unable to perform basic life functions. Like get a boner. Whoa. Oh my god, it takes away- it should be the debonerification plan. Then. <laughs> Monstrous deboner. That's from what Future. Are gonna, what are you gonna do if you don't have a boner? <laughs> Oh no, my boner! (laughs) The other half of the name, bramble, is a term commonly used when referring to the typical thorn-bearing undergrowth found on many planets suitable for plant life, including that of the quite palatable blackberry. Ooh, yummy! (laughs) Yummy for my tummy! Gosh, you want blackberries! Dude, we used to go pick blackberries. Yo, fuck yeah, you did. (laughs) I would just, I would just be picking them off the plant, and eating them. them. Yeah, you're supposed to put them in a basket. would be like, put them in a basket. Yeah, you gotta weigh like, them and shit, right? Why? Yeah, yeah, it's free. I want to eat them. You gotta try them out. Try this bush out. This one's different. Yeah, nature left them lying around. For yeah, us. take yeah. them off the fucking dirt and eat them like a man. Yeah, like my fam- my mom was like, you gotta wash them, and nah. I was like, why? Nom, nom, nom. Nah, dude, you gotta Damn, wash dude. them. Fuck that. Do people know about blackberries? Like. Did 9-11 erase everyone's knowledge of outside? <laughs> you can eat dirt. It's totally fine to eat a little yeah. bit of dirt. It's you eat fine. dirt on everything. It's fucking yeah. fine. You probably should. Yeah, you probably like should. Outside. Yeah. That's why you have a fucking it appendix. Is. It is with these carefully chosen elements that the name Zombramble was made. And with the reason reasoning of said il- selections now having been explained, 
it is expected that recipients of this message find the name that I have created for the plant-based symbiotic parasite of Serata 4 to be quite logical. Mm. Your signatures are awaited and appreciated. Oh, wow. Live long and prosper. Science Officer Fedco, assignment currently contested. Well, thanks for giving us homework to do, Fedco. I was just thinking that, you know what? I haven't done homework in a while. <laughs> I, I was on the Zombramble at first, but it's very TOS, and I like it. I like, I, I you won me over with it, so. I'll do Zombramble. It's yeah. called nothing so far. Yeah, there's no name better for it. I don't, I don't have a better name, so I'm not gonna, you know, that sounds good to what me. What about Danger Spaghetti? <laughs> All right, we gotta <laughs> throw danger spaghetti in the mix. It's a vine with a red horn nod or a purple horn nodule on it that shoots a laser. What about sounds, that? Is danger spaghetti? Sounds like some dangerous spaghetti to me. It does don't eat it. Don't even think about it. Don't go near it. Well, I guess dangerous <laughs> spaghetti does kind of like I don't know. It feels like it's daring me. I feel like I'm being dared to eat it. <laughs> If you saw uh, uh, the original series episode called Danger Spaghetti, you'd yeah, watch it. You'd watch it. Shit. That might be an animated sure. series, but I'd still watch the shit out of it. <laughs> Sp I feel like Spock I'm, is I allergic like to being... spaghetti. What if it's called Quetzalcoatl's Revenge? <laughs> Fuck, I'll watch the hell out of that. I'll make you poop your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for that email, Fedco. That was great. Or homework or whatever it happened. To. <laughs> Thanks, Fedco. Fedco plays my game Hack and sends me um, emails about it, and I think they're all great. Thank you for nice. playing. Nice. Fedco's a great person. Like Fedco yeah. is the only person who's commented on everything I've uploaded on Inksburg. That's like, crazy. One other person Aww. has commented once or twice, but like That's awesome. Fedco comments on everything, and that really means a lot. Thank to you, me. Fedco. Um, our next email is from Pizza Man. Oh my pizza god, man. Pizza Man's pizza here. Man. Pizza Man's been... Want to get some... Fuck yeah, I want some pizza. You guys want to get some pizza after this? I want, yeah, I want yeah, a night dude. egg on top of it. Egg pizza. Egg pizza. You know what? Yeah. Again, that doesn't sound doesn't bad. Doesn't sound bad at all, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's fucking great. It's like timpano. You put, egg, you put egg on top of it with green pepper and onion? Fuck yes. I'll eat whatever. Put that on your fucking boot. I'll eat the... Mm. All right. Put it on my boob. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Um, our, uh, it's entitled, Boo! Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. But Damn. for real, this is a sappy email. Damn, I got spooked as hell from that title. Spooked Ahoy, Trek free. boys. It's your boy, Super Real Pizza Man. <laughs> wow. More than a year ago, I started listening to M-Class because I was blasting through my backlogs and new podcasts while working with my mom cleaning houses. I was like, hey, I'm pretty into TNG, and that has Josh on it. Seems better than most other choices right now. Damn, that's a compliment, that's, I think. That's a, that's a fucking, like, pull quote that we're going to put on the podcast. It's got Josh on it. That's better than other choices right now. <laughs> A few months later, I joined the Discord, and although my life since then has been in a bit of turmoil in one way or another, the friends I've made there have been my one constant. Yeah. You guys have helped me find some great TV, discover what drinks I like, only after I turn 21, okay, police? <laughs> <laughs> and dig up some real emotion I didn't know I had hidden. <laughs> Shit, I, really can't, I, I, I really can't tell where my life would be without M-Class right now. But I'd have, uh, but I'd have like an extra hundred bucks and a probably shittier handle on my life. <laughs> all in all, <laughs> all in all, though this is indeed a love letter to the boys Jeff and Josh. It is also a thanks to everyone else who makes this the best darn tootin' trek community. Oh, I love you, Pizza Man. <laughs> From the baby That's boy like of satellite Discord, Pizza Man. <laughs> Special thanks to Desrath, Boston Sean, Rich. Poppy, Spivzy, and all the other good, yeah. good boys. That's like the nicest. You turned a youth's life. He turned a youth's life around. A youth. Yeah. We had nothing to do with it. It was the Discord. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll take credit for We're it though. There. Fuck we it. We made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You built the clubhouse. Yeah. Which, it's true. Which they convened. I uh, <laughs> P.S. I finished Deep Space Nine. It was good. There you go. PPS, Spoilers. do an M class, etc. on the Orville. Okay, alright. We already got that email. 
We will. I promise. Pizza Man, that was a very sweet email. Yeah, thank you, Pizza Man. It does mean a lot. Thank you. We love you, Pizza Man, and Poppy, and Desrath, and Spivzy, and Rich Masters, and everybody. Your boss is Sean. Boss and Sean. And Jason, and yeah. Cesar Diego. Cesar Diego. Fucking everybody. Yeah. Rian. Oh, yeah. Rian. Run. Rian. I don't know how to say her name. Um... Mm -hmm. literally everybody who hangs out on the discord you guys are all fucking great thank you for being who you are if it wasn't for you guys our community wouldn't be as great as it is and it wouldn't be so welcoming to new people to join at yeah. patreon.com slash m slash podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there it thank, is thank you for that email pizza man it does mean a lot that was cool our next email is from uh, stalwart. Oh my and god. Stalwart. stalwart gives me absolutely no instructions on what voice to give his character. Uh oh. Uh, so oh I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, Let it flow. Improv. Salutations from the glorious Imperium of Humanity. <laughs> Pretty good. Like Greetings that. and salutations, Trek brothers. Okay. I Trek send brothers. this to you through a multi-dimensional warp channel as a means of continuing the Emperor's glorious ambition. Oh, I get what this is. Okay. Is this, this should be greetings and salutations, Trek Brothers. He's Klingon. I sent no, he's yeah. not. He's from Warhammer 40k. Oh my god, is he the fucking skeleton emperor? That guy's scary as fuck, dude. <laughs> it's Halloween time. I'm not trying to get fucking freaked out by that ghost ass emperor who lives in a fucking dead body or whatever the fuck. I send this to you through a multi dimensional warp channel as a means of continuing the emperor's glorious ambition of uniting all of humanity oh across god. the stars. It's is that like the per my last email of the of the Warhammer universe? <laughs> <laughs> per my last email, it's very verbose. My name is Stalwart. The wall name I took upon joining the Imperial Fists, the Damn. finest defenders of the Emperor's Imperium. Shit. I have several questions for you all. Okay. Okay. As you seem to be interested in sci-fi, have you ever attempted to read anything pertaining to the Warhammer 40k universe? Uh, my cousin is into it, and I only know from talking to him about it. I never, I never got into it, but it sounds. I know through the I, internet. I know about the Emperor, and I know about like there's like yeah. magic, and they're like paladins and shit. I know that. The thing is, like, I, I've learned through the internet, but like. Everything that's interesting about the Warhammer 40k universe, everyone who loves it hates and doesn't want to have anything to do with. Like, I find the Eldar to be, like, really fucking interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, they're, like, dead world and they, like, fly around in planet ships with yeah. their tiny little population. And, like, they split off into factions and shit. That's really cool. Yeah. No one cares about that because it's not big meaty boys using weapons to kill aliens. Yeah, but the I like the orcs. Because yeah. they are funny and British. Oh, yeah. And also, they're like the most powerful race in the universe because what they believe to be true becomes true. Yeah, That's, which so is dumb crazy they, fucking funny and cool. They read The Secret? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It is surprising. They, they like, Go ahead. They, they have like a superstition where if you paint a car red, it'll go faster. And because of orc magic, that's true. Oh, that's why the it insurance is, is higher on red cars. Yeah, exactly. thanks, orcs. Orc thanks, orcs. It is surprisingly verbose, <laughs> filled with glorious sci-fi action, <laughs> and surprisingly high amount of strange tentacles. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Uh, please Jack note Kevin. that part. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not in. <laughs> I'm not trying to yeah. yuck anybody's yum here. It's fine. Uh, I mean. Please note that part is highly heretical. <laughs> if you haven't, I would suggest reading the Horus Heresy series currently published by the Black Library. Ooh. It predates the current setting and informs us of the single most tragic event to have ever occurred within our history. Truly a wonderful and wistful experience. Damn. Sincerely yours, Stalwart, Captain of the Second Company, the Scions of Redemption. Wow! Emperor's blessings upon you all. Holy shit. Yeah, no, like, I, I, I always thought it was kind of cool. It always, 
gave me a big like heavy metal vibe, right? Oh yeah, it's yeah. super heavy metal. Yeah, which I love. I love heavy metal. The both the type of music and the movie. Oh yeah, heavy metal. The movie is fucking right. Heavy um, metal. Gonna fight on a B seventeen. <laughs> it's like I don't know. There's like. Oh. I guess I've had a bad idea of the Warhammer 40k, like, entire thing, because, like, every person I've met, for the most part, who was into the fandom has been, like, super right-wing, angry woman-hater. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's kind of that, Like, right? I see that all over the internet as well, so I kind of stayed away from it. I just kind of read about stuff right. on, like, wikis and everything, and, like, like yeah. I said, the Eldar are really fucking cool to me, especially, I played an elf... Uh, a paladin, an elf paladin in a really old game I was in, and I designed his armor, like Eldar armor, with like the sweeping pointed helmets and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because I love the look and the lore and everything so much, but... Yeah. I also um, don't have $900,000 to build an <laughs> army of miniatures. Ah, uh, that's the thing, right? The miniature shit? Yeah. Like, oh god, that's that shit's like addiction. Like, that's a problem. I feel like Warhammer is the Reddit to Dungeons and Dragons Tumblr. Damn, you might be right. I mean, it depends on your opinion of Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tumblr's before Yahoo. Yeah, yeah, old okay, Tumblr. So lots of titties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Like, yeah, I, know. I don't know, like. I've met, I've, I have met a few people who like Warhammer a ton and are huge into it, and they're like, "Yeah, you got to stay away from certain circles." Like, yeah, I'll, I'll put it this way: I know like, like twenty different kinds of people who play Dungeons and Dragons. I know one kind of person who plays. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I will say, like, I remember there being, like, space dwarves. Yeah, there's dwarves, the right. The squats. And then they took them out of the know. game because they were too silly. And I'm like, did what? you just look at the rest of the game? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the game aesthetically is just, it's, like, bonkers, man. Like, it is crazy. It's all it's, over the place, which is and, cool. And, like, some of the design is really fucking awesome. Yeah. And others is, like, kind of questionable. Yeah, I kind of feel that it's, way like, about so many uh, different artists. I feel that way about uh, that Vermintide universe, whatever the universe. That's yeah. true. Like yeah. some of it, you're like, "Oh, this is cool," and then some of it, you're like, "Nah, I wouldn't have gone. I don't like this. I wouldn't have gone muskets and like I don't like that." You know? Uh, I like just, I, I feel that way about Elder Scrolls in a way. Sometimes where, like, half yeah. the Elder Scrolls stuff looks great, and the other half looks like real weird and wonky, and I'm yeah. not into like visually, aesthetically. Yeah. But I guess that's the point in having a lot of different aesthetics. Yeah. A, a lot of Warhammer, like, literature that I know really wants to make the individual feel powerless. Like, even the Space Marines are all fucking, like, roided up and huge or whatever. And, you know, they can be wiped out by, like, a stray bullet. Right. Like, it's it's about how pointless an individual is. And I'm yeah. like, I know. Yeah, I know that. It's like a, it's like it's yeah. like World War One in space, where you're just like, why play, are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, I don't play a game like yeah. a tabletop game to be like a weak ass bitch. I'm that in real life. I don't need that. Yeah, I'm trying to be not a weak ass bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to be like a super cool adventurer, which is why like I'm never a fan. If a D, if I'm playing with a DM and they're like, all right, like you're gonna be like real weak in this world, I'm like, why do I want to pass? <laughs> I want to yeah. be like one. Yeah. The, I don't want to be weaker than the town guard. Right. Like, why don't the town guard go kill the monsters then? Right. There's a reason yeah. why like Lord of the Rings works is because those three heroes are like great. Right. They're like great. Yeah. And by the end, of, we talk about this all the time. By the end, they're like fucking superheroes. They're they're murdering entire yeah. waves of orcs, and that's the idea. Is yeah. like you will be Aragorn and Gimli right. and Legolas if you play long enough. Right. If you get to a high enough level, you'll be those guys. Yeah. But I, I still I shouldn't start out being weaker than, like, a peasant with a knife. Yeah. <laughs> I think what we're trying to say is that art that makes you feel good is the only good art. There's no <laughs> yeah. other emotions. Damn. Also, I think what we're trying to say, now bear with me, is our opinions yep. are right and everybody else's yep. are wrong. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly that. Uh, I think, really, at the end of the day, what we're saying is that none of us have done anything in the Warhammer 40k yeah. universe. <laughs> I only know a little bit about it, and I know that the the painting of things is highly fun, and I would stay away from it. And it's expensive as fuck. It's so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I liked making that voice for that character. That was, that was good. Fun. Yeah. I thought I was going to get Warhammer drafted. He's going to drag you into the Imperium of Man. Yeah, I don't do want you guys, uh, Do you guys want to save the letters to Starlog for another time, or do you want to go ahead and do them? Uh, I don't know. What do you want to do? Oh, <laughs> I'm do the leader, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you I'm, know what? I'm gonna... We're over an hour now. I think now is a good time to call it. Thank you to Asterios Coconos who sent in the star log. This is like episode, the second episode we didn't read. <laughs> yeah, I'm we're sorry, gonna, man. dude. I love st I love the star log stuff. We're gonna do it. I do too. It's like, funny I just, as shit. I'm saving them because of the time we didn't get any emails at all. Yeah. <laughs> I still want to do the show no matter what, and you've Smart. basically created a net for us, which I'm incredibly thankful yeah, for. Yeah, I love safety nets because heights scare me. Uh, wow. That was very uh, real and em emotional of you to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's thank why I'm here. I uh, also like to thank Asterios for just being a nice guy. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank everybody who wrote in today because without you, we literally do not have a show. Yeah, so please keep you. writing in. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of the Hootin' Nanny, <laughs> then you can shoot us an email at mclassemail at gmail.com or follow us over on Twitter at mclasspodcast. Kevin, what? where can these people find you on the tubes? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin. Um, I am on a podcast called Pretend Friends, uh, where with, with Josh, uh, where we tell stories with a role-playing game that I invented called Space Kings. I don't know when this is going up, but uh, maybe my Kickstarter for Space Kings is up right now. You can check by going to my Twitter and following me at RealKevinCole, or you can go to SpaceKings.Space, which is where you can find all Space Kings-related information <laughs> at this time. How did you get a dot .space domain, dude? Dude, I had to fucking hack the Kremlin, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hacking who, Kremlin, Joe? <laughs> Yo, you gotta fucking fight in the space wars before they'll let you have a dot space. <laughs> space wars. <laughs> if, you, if you'd like to become a part of who we are as a group, the Discord we were talking about earlier, the community that's been built around our podcast, which is... Without a doubt, the best online community I've ever had anything to do Hell with, let alone been yeah. responsible for. Then uh, you can head to patreon.com slash mclasspodcast, and for as low as $1 a month, you gain access to that great group of people who will be your friends. You get a group of friends for a dollar a month. <laughs> we, we guarantee you a group of friends. <laughs> yeah. Or your money back, because you can literally take your money back whenever you want. There's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> again, that's patreon.com slash mclasspodcast. And I bet sooner or later, maybe by the time this episode comes out, there will be brand new, there'll be a brand new place to buy M class merchandise. What the, the fuck internet. are you fucking talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make, I'm going to put together at least one new M class shirt and sell the old M class shirts. Oh, at a new location my soon. God. Regardless of whether it's where I hope it'll be or where it will be, by the time this episode comes out, it might be within a week after. I'm not sure. But uh, there will be some M-Class merch again. Fuck you, CBS. You can't follow me everywhere. Yeah, eat my shit, shit farts. <laughs> God. Click, click, boom. Clice, clice, boom. <laughs> 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 thank you to Kevin for being on the podcast we always love having you here thank you Kevin thanks guys I love you thank you I love you uh, the fuck right back <laughs> thank you to Josh for co-hosting the podcast with thanks me. Josh you're the greatest I know thank, thank you to Jeff for being Jeff and Jeffing it thanks up. Jeff Bye I man. love you too Jeff I love you guys I'm always Jeffing you know it. <laughs> oh he's Jeffing right now I'm Jeffing I'm Jeff he's doing the Jeff <laughs> he's doing the Jeff Everybody do, do the jab. J E F F F. There's three F's. Put an extra F in. Fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> that means J E F. Fuck you, Jeff. He's doing the worm. <laughs> All right. Just thanks like everybody for tuning in. Out. <laughs> <laughs> like you've been doing the Jeff song for for the whole time. <laughs> it's a perfect way to end the show. No, thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll be back. In one week's time with more M-Class goodness. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>
Jay. E. Pepe. Pepe. Pepe.